Hello, everybody. Um, I think we are still waiting for some people, but as it's uh, already 12 past, uh, 2 past 12, we might uh, begin for the presentation. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Um, and welcome to this webinar entitled uh, Japanese Knotweed, a new approach of thermal treatment uh, to knotweed. Uh, I'm Jean, I will be your host today. Uh, it won't be Aurelien as uh, introduced in the messages and e emails because he's not, uh, he's not present today. Uh, but I'm also working in business development team uh, as an account manager uh, since uh, already more than six years. Uh, today, our special guest will be Guillaume Botin, as you can see uh, in the camera. Uh, he is only 25 years old and he studied, he studied as a geological engineer. And he joined uh, Amherst Technologies one year ago, I think, uh, and he is working um, almost just for the research and development team. Um, he mainly dealt uh, with the implementation of uh, multi-phase extraction wells. Uh, on a special site that we are remediating uh, nowadays. And uh, is also developing a new way to treat uh, Japanese knotweed and is going to explain you what is this new way uh, of treatment. Um, now I'm gonna talk a bit of practical information. So this presentation will last approximately 20 to 30 minutes. And then we will have a question and answer session. So please feel free to ask your question in the chat and I will, uh, or your comments, and I will try to answer with uh, Guillaume after the presentation. Um, and after the webinar, you will receive a certificate that uh, attests your presence uh, during the, the session. And you will also be able to see uh, in one or two days the presentation uh, on the YouTube channel of Amos Technologies. Um, a bit of presentation of Amos Technologies for those who don't really know us. We are a Belgium-based company um, that supplies solutions for soil and water remediation. Uh, we are approximately 50 to 60 people working in this uh, company. And we are present worldwide, like we have uh, business offices in the uh, United States, uh, so we are working in all the all America. We are also working in all Europe, and we are also working uh, in uh, Asia. Uh, so you can find us uh, mostly everywhere in the world. Um, and yeah, so we are specialized in thermal treatment. So that is something that Guillaume is going to explain to you a bit uh, later, and how we can specialize thermal treatment uh, for uh, eradication of uh, Japanese knotweed. Um, so now I'm going to let you uh, present, Guillaume, <laughs> your subject, and then I will see you later for some questions. Thank you, Jean. So, um, hey everyone, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, how we can uh, treat a uh, Japanese knotweed. So that will be the plan of the presentation. We'll start with a small botanical introduction. Then we will explain why the Japanese knotweed is an issue. The solution available on the market, how Amorous technology can adapt the can adapt to the, the problem and how we can also improve the adaptation we have and we finally conclude the presentation. So regarding the botanical introduction, so the term Japanese knotweed is a one appellation for three species of knotweed. The Japanese knotweed, the Sakhalin knotweed, and the Bohemian knotweed. That is an hybrid between the two first ones uh, and is the most difficult one to, to tackle because it takes advantages of the two other species. Concerning the plant, a little bit of history. The first traces of the Japanese knotweed in Europe can be dated back to the Middle Ages. It was used at this time to feed uh, cattle because it has a huge yield ratio of um, biomass. And it was reintroduced later on in the 19th century as a decorative plant due to uh, its early blooming and its nice smell. So how can you recognize the plant? First of all, it had very big leaves 
between 15 and 25 centimeter long. It has a fast growing stem. It is knotted and has a bit of a bamboo appearance. The, it has white flowers that you can be seen on the picture over here. And it has a very complex root system that are called rhizome and that spread everywhere. Uh, regarding the stem, they can grow very quickly at up to eight centimeters a day, reaching the, um, <clears throat> the total height of four meters in less than two months. And finally, it's an annual plant, so each year it dies, and uh, in the winter time, there is only the dead stem that remains. About the reproduction, the reproduction of the plant is mainly by the rhizome, about 80%. And a little bit with the seed, about 20%. Each knot can lead to the creation of a new stem, and one centimeter of rhizome left in the soil is sufficient to uh, give a new plant. Here is a small picture of the um, rhizome uh, network. As you can see, with a very small plant, the rhizome can go up to 2.5 meter deep and 2.5 meter wide on the other side of a the plant. Then, why is the Japanese knotweed is a serious issue? First of all, the Japanese knotweed is omnipresent. You can find it along the, on, along the train track, along the river, in the street, in the buildings, everywhere. It's also a big problem against the biodiversity. Indeed, as you can see here on the meme, the plant is very growing fast, taking all the sunlight, the nutrient, the space, and the other species are not able to compete. Due to this problem, we have noticed that the plant population is decreasing and also the animal population is decreasing. In water environment, there is a 40% decrease in the species. And there is also a problem with building. Indeed, the roots are growing inside the building and can cause some problems of stabilities. So is there some solution available to the Japanese knotweed? There is some, but not that, effect that effective. The first one, and it's a physical mean, are the excavation. It's a very laborious job because you need to dig everything out to find every piece of root so you need to dig up to 2.5 to 3 meters deep and on the whole area. And you also need to do an exit treatment after a while. Indeed, you need to burn the, the rhizome you excavated. And if you leave one piece of root left, you've worked on nothing. The second physical means is a continuous mowing. But there is a big uh, risk of uh, dispersion. Indeed, there is debris that it can fly away and reimplant a bit further. It might kill the roots, but not necessarily, and the roots can go dormant and wake up five to ten years later and grow a new plant again. And you need also an ex situ treatment for the debris that you need to incinerate. Moreover, the mowing is a very long procedure and may take five years to get rid of the plant. Finally, the last physical mean is the soil covering. It's very expensive. Indeed, you need to put um, a soil cover made of plastic or geotextile or something like that to block the sun from coming into the, into the ground and to block the plant to pass through the covering. It needs to be heavy to block the plant. It needs to be thick enough to not create any holes and to be strong against time. So that's why it's expensive. And also this method is not selective and will kill all the plants in the area. And if you leave the tiniest hole in the covering, a new plant can grow and again, you walk for nothing. So there is other methods like biological treatment. The first one is the use of a natural predator. There is a small flies in Japan that has been introduced in the UK to try to fight the plant, but there is very mixed results. However, the good point is that the fly doesn't uh, affect the natural, uh, the local uh, plants. There is also the introduction of a uh, leaf spot fungus uh, that uh, kill the plants by uh, 
killing the leaf and blocking the photosynthesis. Or a last solution is the use of an eco edge, like using goats that will eat the plants and killing it in the same way of the mowing. And this time, the, pro the advantage is, is that you don't need to incinerate the debris. The problem is that it's very mixed results, and there is no certitude about the fungus and the natural predator that they can survive in winter time. And it's also a very slow process, so not really effective. <clears throat> and finally, there is a chemical treatment that consists in the injection of glyphosate into the plant. So here you can say all you need to process and you need to come with a needle and inject the glyphosate in each plant individually on a specific location of the plant. The problem is that you also have to do that in a very small window per year when the plant has stopped growing and not too late in the season, otherwise the plant has already sent reserve into the roots and you will not kill the roots. It's also a very long procedure since you need to inject in plant individually. So regarding all the solution, we need to find something that is more efficient and maybe thermal desorption can bring this solution. So how is thermal treatment working? First of all, we have a flame that is generated out of the ground. Then the heat is going down into an inside tube and then going outside in the external tube. And there is a neat exchange from the ground level to the rhizome depth. Finally, the heat will propagate into the ground via conduction and the heat will kill the rhizome. But how can we be sure that the heat killed the rhizome? And that's how we proceeded. We did some experiment with uh, Kyle Leuven at uh, Belgium University in three phases. The first phase is we took rhizome that we put into an oven and that we eat it. We eat it at 50 degrees or at 80 degrees during one day, two days and three days. Once the rhizome were eaten, they were put it in a um, soil, soil compartment and put into optimal growing position, condition with sufficient light, sufficient humidity, nutrient and all they needed. After 30 days, they measure how many roots had spread out again. And as you can see here on the table, you can see that if you eat at 50 degrees during one day, about half of the rhizome can grow up again. But if you eat at 50 degrees during three days, 100 of the rhizome, 400% of the rhizome are dead. On the other hand, if you eat the soil at 80 degrees, you kill them instantly after a day. Thanks to those results, we know that the target temperature is at least 50 degrees during three days or 80 degrees during one day, and we can proceed to the next step, that is doing a next situ phases at the office here in Brussels. We took a big cube in metal that we filled up with dirt and rhizome and that we eat it with uh, our burners. As you can see here on the graph, you can see the eating phases. And you can see after that the temperature of 80 degrees is reached at least during one day everywhere. And so after that, we remove the dirt, we let it cool it down, and we put it again in the optimal growing condition. And after 30 days, nothing happened. The rhizome were dead. So at this point, we know that the temperature, we know the temperature, and we know that we can do it with our technologies. Finally, we needed a third phase that was testing it on site. And we tested the technology in Ireland, in the Netherlands, here. We put it eight burners with a 1.8 meter enter distance and eight secondary tube that we put it around the zone to ensure a good coverage. And we plan a two week treatment. Here you have the plants. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight burners and some secondary tube all around the zone to make sure that we cover all the roots. Here is the installation. As you can see, there is all the tube for the burners. And 
on this stage, we are using our gas technology. So that's before the installation of the gas network. And that's after the installation of the gas network with the exhaust, the gas, and all of of stuff, the fan to extract the, the fumes. After a two week treatment and a temperature of 80 degrees during one day, we had on 100% success. How can we be sure? Here is a difference. Before the treatment, we have a small area with a Japanese nutweed. One year later, here is the same area, normal nutweed, and just plenty, plenty of fauna, flora. But can we do better than that? That's why we need the efficiency, and we are developing the hot screw with AMORS. What is the hot screw? The hot screw is a nodal screw. It's a long tube with a, a thread all around it that acts just like a screw and that we can drill into the soil directly. It offers a better heat conduction due to the fins. Indeed, the dirt will not be just touching the tube, but also the, all the small fin, increasing the efficiency. It's very easy to install. Indeed, you just drill it into the ground. There is an electrical resistance inside. You plug it, it eats, and it's done. And here is the installation procedure. So here on the right of the screen, you have the screw doing, doing, being drilled inside. As you can see, it goes very quickly into the ground with no very big resistance. And here is the small uh, excavating machine that we need. Just that, and it's okay. And here is the installation that we did here in uh, Brussels for the test. So we have one screw over here, another here, and all of the other other thermocouple to monitor the temperature and make sure that everything is going smooth. So as you can see, it's a very lighter installation than the one with the gas network. We just need one or two electrical lay, uh, cable and that's it. And here on the back is the electrical installation. So also something very clean. On the other hand, here we have a graph of the evolution of the temperature in the soil close to one of the tube. And you can see that after one and a half day of eating, we already reach a temperature of 80 degrees. So we can see with this graph that the hot screw is very efficient to achieving the target temperature. So that was the presentation about uh, how we can treat um, the Japanese nutweed. So as a conclusion, I will just quickly go about, uh, through the pro and cons of the technologies. So it's a very site adaptive. Indeed, you can put it everywhere. The advantages of the screw is that you just drill it and that's it. So you can you can walk in the rocks, in sand, in clay, everywhere. You can walk any time of the year. No need to wait for the plant to have bloom or to have stopped growing or anything. Since you just eat the soil and you kill the rhizome, it's a very fast treatment, two week times and it's over. A fast installation, in less than 10 minutes, you can put one screw in the ground. So if you take an eight hour, hour day, you can put between 40 and 50 screw in a day. There is no perturbation on the environment. You are just using electricity, nothing else, and just small tubes going out of the ground. And you have a 100% killing rate of the rhizome. There is small cons, is that there is a important energy consumption, like with every thermal uh, method, and it's not very selective since we are eating with conduction. There is a plume of heat that's going out of the tube and killing everything. But some seeds are better to resist than the other, and natural plant from region can regrow after I've seen it. Thank you all for your intention, and uh, if you have questions, they are welcome. Well, 
Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Guillaume, for the presentation. I think uh, it's a great step forward because we already did a presentation, I think, last year about uh, Japanese nutweed, and uh, we didn't have the hot screw. And I think uh, you can correct me if it's not the case, but uh, we have a, a brevet on that. Yeah, yeah, uh, we have a patent uh, on it. Patent. Okay. So that's great. Um, I can see a very big difference between the gas installation and the hot screw. Like gas installations, it might take some days to install everything, the networks, etc. And with the hot screw, you basically just have to drill and uh, and then plug it to uh, an electrical way, uh, ele 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 electrical source. So uh, that's that's a great thing. Uh, do you do you think it's possible to implement it in a very large sites? Yeah, the, it can be implemented anywhere. You just need the electrical power and that's it. Okay. So if you have power, you can put as many as you want. That's the only okay. limitation. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I, I had um, a question when you did the, the, the slide about soil covering. Um, you talked about uh, the way to cover the soil in order for not the sun to, to, to come. Uh, inside the soil, <clears throat> does it kill the rhizome or does it prevent it from growing? Do, do you have an idea? I mean, on this, it will come in two steps. During the first step, the since the plant cannot grow, since there is no sun, no light, it will like take into its reserve to try to grow and kill itself very slowly, trying to pierce surface. So it's kind of killing the plants on the long term, but it's a very long process since you need to like wear out the plant of its energy. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Um, we, we have some comments uh, about the site you presented uh, in Erin. Uh, what was the, do you, do you know what was the, the treated surface? surface? Um, I don't remember very well, but it was just a few square meter. Mm -hmm. Okay, but as you can see, if I go back into the slide, um, yes, here you can see that we have something like five meter by five meter, something like that, with the plants in the middle. Okay, and uh, the desorption was up to three meters. Is the same? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Reach okay. the. We walk on the whole depth of the rhizome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And there is there is a, an interesting uh, comment, still uh, still from Tom. Um, can you deliver an attestation that the soil is free from Japanese nutweed? So, the question is, how do you, how can you ensure the client that there is no more uh, rhizomes? Because when we are doing thermal desorption on uh, hydrocarbons, for example, we are doing some samples. Do you need to do some samples uh, or do you have another kind of way to, to do it? So, in theory, based only on the temperature, if we see that we can reach like 80 degrees during like two days, we know that we will kill 100% of, um, of the rhizome. But there is still some way to do some samples and uh, but put them on the lab, but it takes a longer time because you need to uh, put the, the rhizome in optimal condition. And we are kind of looking with uh, another university to see if it's possible to have like a quick test that you put on the plants. And if the um, if there is like a, you put the product on the plants, it will react with the cells of the plant and change color. And so if the cells are alive, it change color. If the cells are dead, it doesn't change color. And so it could be a solution to test quickly if mm. everything worked. Wow, <laughs> that could be great. Um, if, if I understand well, I guess you also monitor a uh, lot the temperature between uh, everywhere in the site, then you are sure yes. that everywhere it's 80 degrees. Yes, we might are in the in the cool point. So uh, if I go back here, we will monitor like here in the middle where we are the further of each burner. So if at this point that is the further of each burner, the 80 degree is reached, we can be sure that closer to a burner temperature is also reached. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and there is also a question about the cost, but maybe uh, Tom, you can uh, contact us and we will can discuss about it <coughs> um, later. I mean, um, uh, and we have a question also. Um, I am impressed by the regrowth after thermal. Um, do you know how it comes that thermal is uh, boosting regrowth? Do you have an idea why it's doing that? Because uh, as you can see on the picture that you showed, uh, we have way more plants than before. Yes. Why? So the thing is that by burning the plant, you create a kind of charcoal into the ground that is very rich in carbon and that the plant can take energy from to regrow. So that's why you can uh, enhance the plants. And since the Japanese knot tree is also a very demanding plant, by killing it, you leave more nutrient, nutrient in the ground for the other plants. So it's a double effect. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for the answer. Um, there is another comment from Philip. You say it's not selective. How far do you have to stay away from uh, larger trees in the surrounding? Like I see uh, in the pictures that there are trees uh, next to the site uh, of Aaron. Uh, were they impacted somewhere, somehow? Here on the site, they were not impacted, but uh, we haven't just like close by to large trees so far. Mm -hmm. So. I, I would add that um, I think about two or three meters away from the site, there won't be any effect anymore yes. because the temperature won't be increased uh, much. Um, but we we have to keep sure to be sure of that. Um, there is another comment. Do you have a follow up for the test sites? It might regrow after couples of seasons, as as you mentioned. Um, did you or did you went uh, like I don't wh when was the remediation? One uh, year or two years ago. Oh, this one is is now it's been two years ago. So mm -hmm. it's and been two years and we still haven't got any bad news. So okay. So do do you keep an eye on the site? Yes. To be sure of that. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, I think there is no other questions um I had, I had i had another question why you choose 80 degrees during one day and not just 50 degrees during three days uh, do is there a better efficiency or the thing is that um i don't have any picture here but you, you have um mm. if you have like two burners like that the temperature profile will do like from the coldest point to the hottest point will be something like that. And so if you choose 80 degrees uh, on the coldest point, you know that around you have reached it. Mm -hmm. So it's more like uh, a security that, okay, I have reached this temperature, I have it everywhere. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, and no. one last question as well, um, because you've talked, uh, I think what was impressive, as I said, uh, is how you did to develop the, this hot screw. Uh, but does, this, does it, uh, is it as effective as the gas solution uh, in terms of treatment time and in terms of uh, removal rate? Is it the same? Yeah, it's the better? same. If we mm -hmm. compare like the same design, if you remove the, the the fin and all, it will be like a classic burner. So it's the same. With the fin is that we can expect a lower treatment time since we have a better heat conduction. Okay. Okay, that's perfect. And I think there is a lower installation time as well. So also, also, we can go from maybe a week installation to a day installation. So mm -hmm. very shortest time. Okay, so that means if I'm a client and I have a, I have some Japanese nutweed on site, in some days it can be treated, some weeks it can be treated. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, that's uh, th thank you very much for the the answers and all the all the presentations. Um, if you both have uh, other questions, feel free to ask us by emails, and we will try to answer. Uh, 
to you uh, as soon as possible. And thank you for joining this uh, presentation. And I hope you will have a good lunch if it's the time or, or a good day. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.